guys, I'm Madeline. I'm an outreach scientist at Florida Atlantic University's Harbor Branch Oceanographic Institute in Fort Pierce, Florida. Today, we're gonna to talk about how scientists study water clarity, and I'm gonna show you an experiment that you can try at home. Aquatic habitats rely on clean and clear water. An example here in the Indian River Lagoon is a seagrass bed. These underwater meadows are a lot like plants on land. They need light from the sun to survive. Sometimes events like storms, freshwater runoff, and harmful algal blooms can cause the water in an area to become cloudy. When this happens, lots of little particles float around in the water and block sunlight from reaching the bottom. Scientists call this turbidity, and they measure it using a piece of equipment called a secchi disk. So let's take a look at our secchi disk. It's a circular piece of plastic that's got a string on top so we can hold on to it, and a weight on the bottom to help it sink down into the water. On the top, it's got alternating black and white squares in four sections so that we can keep track of it in the water. I'm gonna show you how it works. First, I'm gonna slowly lower the disc into the water. You'll notice it's really easy to see right at the surface. As it sinks further down, it starts to become more difficult and eventually gets to the point where it disappears. When I first lose sight of the disc, I'll record the depth. Then, I'll slowly raise it back up until I can see it again and record that depth too. The average of these two readings is called the secchi depth. When the water is clear, the secchi depth is high because the disc can go deeper before it disappears. However, when the water is turbid, the secchi depth is low because the particles in the water make the disc harder to see and cause it to disappear quickly. Now it's your turn to try this at home. First, have an adult help you download and print the Secchi Disc activity from the FAU Harbor Branch website. If you don't have a printer, don't worry. You can follow along with me and create your own data sheet using a blank piece of paper. To do this activity, we'll make a mini Secchi Disc. Here's the supplies that you're going to need. A bottle cap. Try to find a white one, but if you can't find a white one, you can use white out or white paint to color in the white sections. A Sharpie, a penny, some hot glue or super glue, some white or light colored string, a ruler, a pair of scissors, and a toothpick. To make your secchi disc, you'll divide your bottle cap into four sections and then use the Sharpie, and if needed, the whiteout or paint to fill them in. The sections should alternate in color like this. Once everything is dried, use your hot glue or super glue to attach the penny to the inside of the cap. This will help your secchi disc sink. Make sure that you ask an adult to help you with the gluing and that you're very careful. While the glue is drying, cut your string to be 12 inches long. Then you'll tie a knot in one end of the string and lie your string down next to the ruler on the centimeter side. Then you're gonna use your Sharpie to mark off each centimeter from the knot all the way down to the end of the string. It should look like this when you're done. You might want to put a piece of paper underneath the string so you don't get marker on the table. The last step is to glue the knot to your bottle cap. Use a small dot of glue and your toothpick to hold the knot in place while it dries so that you don't get glue on your fingers. Once it's dry, then your secchi disc will be complete. Now we can set up the rest of our experiment. I need a few more materials. Three pieces of paper, three glasses that can each hold 12 ounces of liquid, a liquid measuring cup, 24 ounces of a dark colored soda, and 10 ounces of water. To get started, 
I'm going to write one, two, and three on the different papers. And then I'm going to put one cup on each page. This will help me to keep track of what I'm looking at during the experiment. Next, you're going to fill up your glasses using the measuring cup, soda, water, and the instructions on your worksheet. Each glass will represent different levels of turbidity, high, medium, and low. Glass one should have 10 ounces of soda. Glass two should have six ounces of soda and four ounces of water. And glass three should have four ounces of soda and six ounces of water. Now we're ready to take some readings. Make sure you've got your data sheet and a pencil close by. I'm gonna start with glass one. I'll take my Secchi disc and I'll slowly lower it into the cup while counting how many black lines pass underneath the water line until I can't see the disc anymore. So I'll look from the top as I count. Can you guys help me count? One, two, three, four, four centimeters. So I'll write that down on my data sheet for glass one, depth one. Now we're gonna slowly raise the Secchi disc back up until we can see it again. So we'll count backwards how many lines come back above the water line. So we'll start with four centimeters and go backwards from there. Four, three, I can see the disc again. That went pretty quickly. So I'll write down three centimeters for the glass one depth number two line. I'm gonna complete the same steps for the other two glasses. You guys can pause this video while you complete the activity and then come back when you're ready to discuss the results. Now that we have all of our data, we have to do some math. So let's start with glass one. I'm gonna add the two depths together to get the total depth. It's seven centimeters. Now I'm going to divide that number, which I'll write again here, by two to get the Secchi depth, which is 3.5 centimeters. I'll do this again for the other two glasses. Now that all my math is done, let's take a look at the questions at the bottom. The first question asks, which glass was the most turbid, which would be the glass that had the lowest value for its Secchi depth? This was glass one. That's because the disc didn't get very deep before we couldn't see it anymore. The second question asks, which glass was the least turbid? which would be the glass with the highest number for its Secchi depth. This was glass three, because the disc went pretty far down in the cup before we lost sight of it. The last question asks, which glass represents an area of water that you think would be better for underwater plants like seagrasses and why? I wrote down glass three, because like we said earlier, Seagrasses need sunlight to survive, and there would be the most sunlight in the least turbid water. Now my Secchi disc activity is complete. Since scientists like to share their data, I'm going to take a picture of what I learned and share it with you guys in the comments of this video. Now it's your turn. Make sure to ask an adult for help, and when you're done, share your results with me by commenting or tagging at Harbor Branch. Thank you for joining me. I hope you enjoyed the activity. If you want to learn more about marine science, you can visit us at FAU Harbor Branch. You can take a tour of our visitor center or even go on a boat ride. Check out our website for more information on our outreach programs and their availability.